Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about um, configuration as code, and uh, specifically the job DSL plugin. Uh, some of the stuff you've heard uh, at the keynote, I'm going uh, a bit in detail about that. Um, my name is Daniel Spilka. I'm working for Comedia in Hamburg, in Germany. Comedia is a web content management vendor, and um, I'm working on the engineering tools team as a software architect, and we are trying to automate everything and making the other development teams happy, run in Jenkins, run in Nexus, run in Jira. And um, I'm the maintainer of the job DSL plugin since I think two years ago, and um, also of the greater JPI plugin. There's a lightning talk tomorrow about that. Um, so at first, I would like to introduce some concepts about configuration as code in general, and then diving into the job DSL plugin on how to apply these concepts, and hopefully there will be some time for questions after that. So where are we today? Um, as we heard in the keynote, we started small with a small Jenkins setup some years ago on a developer box with a single job. Um, but over time, our Jenkins setup has grown a lot. So our different teams are using Jenkins. Um, since everyone is using Git, teams are having multiple branches that they work on. They want their pipelines and jobs for each of their branches. Um, so we end, we end up with a lot of jobs uh, and a lot of pipeline configurations. And um, we have a slight problem managing that complexity. So um, what's the obvious uh, choice? So when you start a new branch or set up a new team or a new project, you start by copy and pasting existing job configurations and editing stuff in HTML text areas. Your shell scripts are in there. Then you have to click through the advanced button to see if there are any additional options which need to be tweaked. And um, the whole process is not very nice. So working with the UI can be slow if you have a large Jenkins instance. And um, it, it does not feel right. So what do we uh, really want to do? Um, we, will, we want to speed up that. So, uh, setting up a pipeline for a new branch uh, should be possible as quickly as pushing a new branch to Git. And um, we have these fancy text editors where we do our other work in. We also want to use that to configure Jenkins where we have decent syntax highlighting, where we can uh, apply refactoring, even as simple as search and replace, which is not really possible in the browser. We would like to trace our changes in source code management. so. We can, so that we can see uh, who did the change, and when uh, the developer left a nice mes message, we can also see why he has changed something. And um, yeah. So in the Jenkins world, as always, there's a plugin for that. Um, there are several plugins which solve aspects of the uh, configuration as code part. So there's the job config history plugin where you can see what changes. Uh, have been in the in the past. Um, there's the workflow plugin, which allows to to set up complex pipelines. Um, there's also the the template project plugin or the job generator plugin, which allows to have uh, to to generate jobs from certain template templates. And of course, there's um, the job DSL plugin, which tries to solve all these things. So. Um, the job DSL plugin, as the name says, there's a um, job DSL language, a domain specific language, which uh, looks like this. So it's a, a curly braces, Java like, C like um, language. Technically, it's a Groovy um, DSL, so it's, it's implemented in Groovy. It's a Groovy script. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So when you start to create a job with a DSL, you typically start with the job element, and the first in the in the first braces there's the uh, name for the job. Um, then you start to to configure your job. The first thing you need to have is a, like a source code management. You fetch your code from GitHub, uh, as you would do in the UI. So it translates more or less one to one from the UI to the DSL. So for most um, 
UI elements, there's the corresponding DSL element, so it's, it's very easy to, to translate an already configured job from the UI to the DSL. Then you configure your builds tabs. In this uh, case, it's a Gradle builds tab. And then you want probably to archive the output of the um, job. And then you're done. You're having your first simple job configured with job DSL. So how um, does the job come from the, from the language to your Jenkins? Um, of course, with the JobDSL plugin. So at first, you need, of course, to install the plugin from the Update Center. And uh, the important part then is to create a new freestyle project, a new job, which we call the C job, which will then generate all your jobs. That's where you put your DSL scripts in. So this, it's called the C job because it more or less grows, it sows the other jobs. So the <coughs> um, in, an, in an ideal world, it will be the only job you configure manually, all other jobs you, you create through the DSL. Of course, you want to put your DSL scripts into source code management, so you, you have to configure your Git repo, and then there's a builds tab, with, 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 which comes with a um, DSL plugin, so you have to configure that, and there's an option to um, where to look for the scripts, and you say look on the file system. When you choose the other option, there will be a text area when, where you can enter your, your DSL script, but uh, that's more or less for testing or for playing around, but it's not recommended for production since we want to trace our changes in source code management. So, and um, then you're done with configuring, you run the job, and here in, in this case, um, uh, four or five jobs have been generated. So, as you've seen, uh, there are several um, custom DSL elements for, for plugins, like the Gradle plugin or the Git plugin or GitHub plugin. Um, there's more. Um, astonishing, astonishingly, we have support for 125 plugins. So, um, I was surprised when I put the numbers together from the slides. That's uh, growing over three years to, to 125 plugins. Um, so I, I think the most essential ones are included, at least all the ones Andrew mentioned this morning in his uh, talk about the essential habits. Um, I, I didn't put every plugin on, on the slides, um, but uh, the, out of the box it should get you very far. So there, there are plugins for all kinds of source code management, for all kinds of languages like um, Golang is there, and there's Node.js, and there's Ruby stuff, and Java stuff, and, and a lot of stuff. So how's this possible? Am I sitting there in the evening picking a random plugin and adding some DSL stuff? No, uh, that's not the case. Um, it's, it's many community driven, so currently there are 70 contributors, people who have contributed parts to the DSL or to the documentation or to the tests or whatever, and uh, we've reached uh, over 500 pull requests last week. So um, it's, it's all a community thing. There's people starting using the job DSL, and they, they need support for one or two plugins, which they use, which are not in there, so they start contributing. And over the time, it has grown to 125 plugins. So what about um, or how to extend the DSL? You do not need to be a contributor. You do not need to dive into the DSL code, the core DSL code, to extend the plugin. It's also possible, uh, possible on, on the user level. So let's say we want to um, add a DSL for this global passwords setting, which is in the DSL, but I took it as an example. Um, so you have to locate the, the UI element, which you want to uh, add to your script. And the important part is then, um, you go to the job page in Jenkins and add slash configure.xml to the page, which shows you the internal XML representation of the job. And in that XML, you have to locate um, the XML element matching to the, to the checkbox. In this case, it's the inject global passwords uh, element. And then you can translate that uh, XML snippet to the DSL. So there's a configure, something which we call the configure block, started by the configure method, 
and then you add another curly braces, and then you can see um, that the XML more or less translates one to one to the DSL. So you start with the outer project level in the XML, then you uh, add a slash to navigate to the build wrappers, and then you use the uh, double arrow operator to add a Enter inject passwords wrapper element, and within that, the injured global passwords element was uh, where you true. And that's it. So then you have uh, your custom um, configuration for your DSL. So and you can do that with, with any plugin that contributes to the job uh, to the uh, to the uh, job configuration. So there's almost no limitation there. Um, since it takes a little time to get used to the uh, DSL syntax, especially in the configure blocks, it can, can be quite nasty depending on the XML structure. Um, there's been job DSL contributor Matt Sheehan who created this uh, little app which is running on uh, Heroku um, where you can enter your um, job DSL and then um, hit the run button and it will show the uh, corresponding XML which will be generated from that. Um, that can take you very far, so you don't need to have the round trip through Jenkins, checking your code in, running Jenkins, seeing that there's an error, starting over, so you can, can tweak your script in the playground um, to get to a point where it would run in Jenkins. Um, th th that's not backed by Jenkins, so you can use every DSL element, so there are some elements which need a Jenkins in background, but um, especially for, for, for getting the configure blocks why the playground is really great. And um, there's a, a link to, to the source, so you can run it on your own. If you're uncomfortable with uh, putting a super secret job configuration in an online service, you can also run it locally. So as I said before, um, um, it's a groovy DSL. Groovy is a, a Java scripting language. Um, uh, so everything you can do in Groovy, you can do in the job DSL scripts. So you can uh, define variables, like here's the branches um, variable, which um, has two elements. It's a, it's a list of two elements, master and feature A, and then you can loop over that list and create a new job for each element using the um, uh, the Groovy um, G-string templates to, to insert uh, the, the, the loop variable into the, the string there. So uh, there will be a job called Jenkins Master be created and Jenkins Feature A, and each will have uh, GitHub source code management set up with the corresponding branch, either ma Master or Feature A. Uh, can, you, can you start the timer, please? Um, so, because it's Groovy, you can, can use any Groovy or Java library that's available. Um, there's a little setup um, involved f for, for that, um, which I'm going to show in a minute, um, but it's not that hard. So you, you basically need to download the library from somewhere, from the internet, from Maven Central or uh, whatever. Um, there are several ways to do this. The, you can have a gradual build step when you're comfortable with the, that. Um, there's the res repository connector plugin for Jenkins, which can download arbitrary Java artifacts. Um, but as far as I know, it, it doesn't do any uh, dependency resolution. So uh, when you have a complex library, that can get tricky. Or you can even use a shell script to, to, to download any uh, libraries you need. So how... <laughs> would a DSL script look like that uses a library? Um, so in, in this case, we're using the uh, GitHub library to connect to GitHub and um, get our re uh, repo data and create a job for each branch in a repo. So in this case, uh, it um, goes to GitHub, and gets the Jenkins m m repo where Jenkins core is being developed and loops over each branch in the repo and create a job for each branch in, in that repo. So this, this will end up probably, the, there are, don't know, 15 branches or something like that, you will have 15 jobs. And um, when someone, and when you set your, your seed job to, to run uh, like every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, 
um, and someone pushes a new branch to GitHub, you will have a new uh, Jenkins job building that branch after 15 minutes. So that, that can be handy. Um, so how to get the, the library? Uh, the GitHub library is, is not a single jar. Um, it has a lot of dependencies, so um, I used a, a Gradle script to, to download the library and all its dependencies. Um, this is an example Gradle uh, script, which, um, which defines the uh, dependency to the GitHub API, and then will copy with a copy with a libs task, copy uh, all necessary Java libraries to, um, to a folder called libs. Um, that's what the uh, what the uh, four lines at the bottom do, and um, the just uh, the rest is a little bit boilerplate. And, and then you have to go to the C job configuration, and in the advanced um, options, there's an additional class path um, setting where you enter your folder where your jars are. So in in, in this case, it's lib slash wildcard.jar, so it will pick up every jar downloaded by the Gradle build. And before you a job DSL script, you have to insert a Gradle uh, build step to, uh, to run your libs task to, to download that. But then you can use any library. And um, you can also use uh, your own libraries when you publish, publish them internally. Um, you just have to change the Gradle setup and you can download libraries to, to connect to any of your internal systems or your bug tracker or whatever you need. So what else? Um, uh, you can create methods and classes and functions in Groovy. So um, that's nice to, to create reusable um, code. So um, let's, let's say you're a Maven company and you have a lot of Maven jobs and all your Maven jobs look more or less the same. Then you can uh, create a function which will uh, deal with the basic setup. So in this case, we're creating a create Maven job function. Uh, which, which takes uh, the, the job factory, uh, which I'll show in a minute, and a name for the new job. And uh, then the job factory will create a, um, a new Maven job with, with a Gold and JDK and Maven ins installation and stuff already pre-configured. And um, in your script, I've, I've, I've folded the function away, you can then um, call that function multiple times. Um, you have to pass this, the script, which is the job factory to the function. Um, and then you have to, uh, can you can pass the name for the new job. So in, in this case, we're creating a Maven job for uh, project A and project B. So we have two identical jobs. But um, it's also possible to, to customize uh, the job further. So um, when using the, the with, um, method, you can um, add another curly braces block and, and then add more DSL code. So in this case, we're adding, uh, for job B, we're adding a, a GitHub source code management. And uh, we can, let's say, um, project A is in subversion, then we could add a subversion source code management for that. Um, when your scripts are growing, you may need some logging. So you're not sure what's happening in, in your script. Uh, detaching a Java debugger to Jenkins is probably not, not a good option in this case. So you can apply some poor man's debugging and uh, add some logging. Um, there's a print run statement in Groovy, which you can use, and that will go directly to your um, console output of, of the C job. And um, again, because it's Groovy, you can, you can use it in loops and functions and methods and everywhere. But um, due to the, some implementation details in Groovy, um, the print run statement within classes, even if the, cl uh, the class is defined in your script, will go to, to standard out. So depending on how you're starting Jenkins, that will go to your shell console or to your Jenkins log. So um, to fix that, there's a, a predefined global variable called out in each GSL script, which you can then pass to your classes and, and methods. And um, you can call, uh, then, then call print on, on out, um, and it ends up in the console output. So it's a, it's a Java print stream when you know what I mean. So you can uh, use any of, of that stuff there. 
So when your um, scripts grow, um, they're becoming complex to handle. And as I mentioned earlier, you want to use your favorite text editor. So you will also want to use the features of your text editor like uh, Eclipse or IDEA for that. Um, currently, we have uh, support for IntelliJ IDEA only. Um, to make the, the DSL EDE support work, you uh, can set up a, you can of course configure the EDE manually. You have to uh, locate the job DSL Java library and then add it. But you can also um, add, add this little Gradle file to your, to your project setup um, and then use the EDE to, to open this file and um, it will then be pre-configured to, to know how to uh, do syntax highlighting for your scripts. Um, so what's possible? Um, of course, a uh, simple syntax highlighting. Um, when there's a typo in the script, like I uh, mistyped the Gradle build step, there, there will be a small line. So that's the default configuration of IntelliJ. You can, uh, uh, of course, you can tweak that so it's, uh, that it's a little bit more visible. But uh, you will, will see the, when there are typos in the script. Also, you can um, view any method parameters. So a lot of DSL methods have um, a large number of parameters which go in there. You can press some shortcut and then list all the um, different parameters which go in there with, without looking in the online documentation. And um, we're currently in the progress of migrating the uh, online documentation to uh, Groovy documentation, which is embedded in the code, so you can use, you can browse the documentation um, in the code. So you can press the shortcut for view online doc uh, for view documentation, and then you can um, see the the docs in line. Um, important point is uh, using credentials. So we need credentials for a lot of stuff like source code management or when you're integrating with a bug tracker or whatever. Um, of course, it's a bad practice to put your credentials in plain text into the DSL scripts. So I, I have seen some pull requests for um, adding DSL features which allow exactly that. So that's not going to happen. So instead, use the credentials plugin as always for everything. Um, it, it comes with new versions of Jenkins. Um, all the essential plugins support the credentials plugin, like, like Git, a subversion, or the uh, everything is doing publish over SSH or whatever. Um, and even if it's not supported by uh, you, the uh, plugin, does not support the credentials plugin, it's still possible to use the credentials binding plugin to map credentials to uh, environment variables. So you can, when you have a shell script which needs some credentials, you, you do that so that the uh, password will be available in your um, shell script. And most important point, newer versions of the credentials plugin allow to specify the ID manually. Before that, there was a random UUID. Now you can specify your, like, um, custom nice to read ID, which you can then use in your DSL scripts to reference credentials. So in this case, uh, we're adding credentials to access our private uh, repo on GitHub. Um, so you have to look into the online documentation for the DSL um, on how that will look for other like subversion or other plugins. So um, since we have enough time, more DSL in detail. Um, as I already mentioned in an example before, um, you can also create Maven jobs. So the job method will create freestyle jobs. Then we have support for other um, uh, project types, so inclu including the workflow. So you can define your workflow job with the DSL. Um, also the matrix multi-job configuration is possible. Um, this is an example for, for a custom project type like the workflow. Um, the DSL can, can vary um, depending on the project type. So this, the workflow has no build steps, no publishers uh, like that. Um, but instead here we're reading a, a, 
uh, workflow script from, from the file system. Newer versions of the workflow plugin can do that directly, so you do not really need the DSL for that, but here's it's an example. So um, what we see here is that the, uh, there are several built-in methods in the DSL, like uh, read file from workspace, which will read a file from your workspace where your DSL scripts are located. So in this case, the Acme Groovy will be next to your job Groovy file, and you can read that in and put that into the script text box for the workflow. And you can also use that for shell scripts and other stuff which requires complex um, scripts. Uh, nice point here is that um, you can also then, if you have, put, have a shell script, you can also edit the shell script in the EDA and you can take advantage of the EDA with syntax highlighting specifically for shell scripts. Um, so you do not have to edit that as a string in, in Groovy um, or whatever. So um, it's also possible to extend uh, the DSL with new um, project types. So because it's uh, everything uh, is, is XML in Jenkins, uh, as far as the job configuration goes. So in this case, um, we're trying to add support for the freestyle multi-branch project plugin, um, which defines a new top-level XML element. And how we are going to do that? Um, we're using a configure block to manip manipulate the XML. Um, so in this case, we're creating a, a, the job element of the DSL. We create a freestyle um, project, and then we use the configure block to manipulate the name of the project element. So we change that to freestyle multi-branch project. Of course, you will have to uh, um, modify all other uh, elements, which can be a uh, huge effort depending on the job type. So, so several, uh, like this one, is close to the freestyle job, so it's a good point to start there but um, it can be very difficult if you, if you need to really rework the complete XML. And there's more. Um, you can also define views in the XML. Um, there's support for several types, which I'll show later. Um, this will define a list view called Project A, which will uh, show all uh, projects or the, all jobs which uh, start with Project A as shown in this regex and then we configure the columns for this view and we're done. So you, you, it's not about, it's, it's called job DSL, but it's not a, only about jobs. Uh, over the time it's grown for, for views and folders and I, I will show that in a second. So um, currently there are seven uh, view types supported, the list view, the built-in list view and the others. Um, so you can configure your build monitor views or your pipeline views also with the DSL along with your jobs. So you probably will end up having a, um, a, a job DSL script per project where you define your pipeline, your, your don't know, 10 jobs, and the view corresponding to that project. Um, as I said, folders are also supported. There's a folder method which, which will create a folder. In this case, it will just get a name, but there are also nested elements available to, to uh, add a nice display name and description and stuff. And when you want to create a job or a view within a folder, you have to use the path directory like syntax, like a view, a folder name slash job name or folder name slash view name to um, create a job within a folder. And of course, you have to install the folders plugin to, to enable support for folders. So, um, to sum up, some best practices. Um, when you have several hundred jobs, it's, you, you should not start with, uh, set up a huge, huge project to, to convert all jobs to the DSL. Typically, you start with, um, with a small project, like a utility job or something like that, you play around with it. When you're comfortable, you're expanding that to, to several jobs, like per, per team or per project or whatever suits you. So start small and then let it grow. Uh, at Comitia, we have several, I would say 500 or 600 jobs, and it took us about, um, I think, two years to, to migrate all jobs to the DSL. Um, so it, it depends. 
And um, w what we did is we enforced a policy at some point where we, we said or uh, talked to our developers and said new jobs should always be created in the DSL so that there will be at that some point no le new legacy configurations. And that worked really well. So, um, as I said earlier, commit your DSL scripts to, to the source code management. You're not going to get any benefits if you use the, the text area and the plugin to, to code your DSL. Um, you get traceability, so you know who did the change, and, and hopefully uh, there's a description for the change. Then do not put plain text credentials in there the, when you push the changes to like your source code management, your passwords will be in there, that's not good. Um, and uh, use Groovy code to avoid uh, repetition. So uh, do use the same coding techniques you use for other code for the DSL. So do code reuse, do refactoring, uh, all that stuff. Think about the design after you're comfortable with the DSL, um, and then you will get the best mileage out of it. Um, the documentation, the reference um, for each DSL method is in the wiki on GitHub. Um, there's a, on, on the Jenkins wiki is, is a link to the uh, GitHub wiki. Um, then if you have any questions, uh, go to our mailing list. We have a, a special mailing list just for the job DSL plugin. Um, even if I'm not around, there are other uh, contributors around who will help you. There's also a Stack Overflow tag. I think it's Jenkins-job-dsl or whatever. Um, so <coughs> um, there you can get your questions answered. Um, then um, there's an example uh, repo on GitHub, which will get you started with the workspace. So, uh, as I said, uh, you can use a Gradle build to um, download your libraries and to configure your EDA, and um, that's a point where you can get started. Those, there's a Gradle script in there. There are two or three classes which define factory methods to generate jobs and, and two job scripts, and um, even an example on how to, t uh, to apply unit testing for your jobs. Um, it's, it's not so it's not really unit testing, but it, it will um, compile your script so you, you can check for any syntax errors. So you can um, check for any errors before committing the code. And so you will not end up with Jenkins failing because um, your DSL script is broken. And of course, there's the playground, as I mentioned earlier, to, to play around with script snippets. Okay, so thank you. That's it.